Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about how to identify minerals. Common minerals that make up most of the rocks in the Earth's crust are called rock-forming minerals. One, uh, two of the most important ones of those are hornblende and feldspar. Mineral identification can happen in a lot of different ways. Uh, the first way is color. However, color is not very reliable. It is easily observed, but, but many minerals have similar color. For example, gold and fool's gold are both gold in color, but you have to use other methods to determine which is which. Luster is how shiny the mineral is. There are many descriptive terms for this characteristic, but metallic and non-metallic are the two that we're going to focus on. If it's shiny like metal, then it's metallic luster. If it's not, it's non-metallic. Crystal shape is the shape that is characteristic to many minerals. So in other words, you can sometimes tell what kind of mineral it is just based on the shape whether it's octahedral, tetrahedral, you know, there's a whole bunch of different crystal shapes and you'll get a chance to practice with that. Streak tests tell you what color is the streak left behind by a mineral after it's rubbed on a rough white tile. Colors are sometimes unique. So you can take a look here. Um, the one on the right is fool's gold, iron pyrite, and you can see that its streak is gray. If it were real gold, it would streak gold. Cleavage is another type of mineral identification, and that tells us um, whether the mineral has a tendency to split along flat surfaces. Cleavage can also be kind of confusing for early mineral identifiers, so I don't expect you to get that right off the bat because it is quite difficult. Another characteristic that's similar to cleavage is called fracture. And fracture means what does the mineral look like after it breaks along a non-cleavage surface? So is it conchoidal or is it irregular? If you take a look at conchoidal, conchoidal means that it breaks like glass. It gets that circular pattern. Um, volcanic glass called obsidian does that. Um, and you can see in the upper right hand corner, you can see a conchoid conchoidal fracture. The irregular fracture is that piece of granite down at the bottom, or marble, that's marble, sorry. Um, and that is one of those that breaks along an irregular surface. Hardness is one of the main characteristics that is used to identify minerals. M mineral hardness is using usually Mohs scale of hardness and it goes from 1 to 10, 10 being the most hard and 1 being the least. Talc is the least hard mineral that we know about and diamonds are the hardest. And so you can see that common objects like fingernails will tell you um, what the hardness is. So basically if your fingernail can scratch it, your fingernail has a hardness of 2.5. So if it can scratch it, it's either got a hardness of 1 or 2. But if your fingernail can't scratch it, but a copper penny can, then it's got a, a, a mineral hardness of 3. And you can see that along that, that way. Specific gravity is one that's not typically used um, except by geologists in the field. You will not use it, but it is something that you do need to know because we do use it to identify minerals. So specific gravity is the ratio of a mineral's weight to the weight of an equal volume of water. So in other words, the weight of the sample in the air um, divided by the loss of its weight in water. Some minerals also react to acids, and you can see this one is bubbling. Um, cold, weak hydrochloric acid bubbles up in the presence of calcite. So in other words, if it bubbles, you know it's got calcite in it. Some have special properties. Some minerals have special properties, like magnetite shows magnetism. You can see the nails attracted to it. Halite has a, a taste, and that's on the right-hand side, upper right, and that is rock salt. Um, calcite shows double refraction, and you can see how it splits and doubles up uh, print as you look through it. And some minerals are phosphorescent. The mineral on the left-hand side shows you under regular light and under black light. 
and that shows you that it glows under black light. And some of the phosphorescent minerals include willemite and sphalerite. And remember last time we talked about silicates. Well, remember these are rock forming minerals and they form silica tetrahedrons. Silicates are the most important building block for minerals. The silica tetrahedrons, to remind you, is four oxygen atoms bonded to one silicon atom. Some of the rock forming minerals that are silicates include quartz. Quartz is all silica tetrahedrons with nothing else. Its chemical formula is SiO2 because the oxygen atoms get shared with neighboring silicon atoms. Feldspars are another very important rock forming mineral and these are the most abundant mineral on earth. Feldspars have some aluminum on it and 60% of the earth's crust is made of feldspar. Another rock forming minerals that you'll often see are micas. These are soft minerals and they flake easily into thin sheets. Very often if you're looking at the surface of a rock and it's got little glittery bits in it, that's mica. Amphiboles, including hornblende, are another important rock forming mineral that are also silicate. These are fairly common in color, uh, fairly common, they're dark in color. And they're called ferromagnesian silicates because they contain both iron and magnesium. And again, this is hornblende here. Pyroxenes are shorter crystals than amphiboles, but they look very similar to the amphiboles and hornblende. Calcites include carbonate, which contains a carbonate group, which is CO3. And calcine is the most common type of carbonate. And it can be in any color, and you can see that here. These are all calcite. Um, they form rhombohedral um, types of crystals. Dolomite is another type of carbonate, and it is the main ingredient that is found in marble and limestone. Iron oxides and sulfides um, include other rock-forming minerals. Hematite is the most common iron oxide and it is high in iron content. Magnetite is another type and it is magnetic, obviously, thus its name. And a common example of that is lodestone and this is lodestone here. Interestingly enough, you'll also find lodestones sometimes in the brains of certain animals that migrate. Um, for example, homing pigeons have lodestones in their brains. And so people assume that they're picking up very slight variations in the Earth's magnetic field, and that's how they find their way home. Iron pyrite is another one. Um, it's made of iron sulfide. It's called fool's gold. And it does look a little bit like gold, but again, it will streak gray instead of gold, like real gold will. Okay, so those are some basic introductions to the minerals, especially the rock-forming minerals. You do need to know which ones are rock-forming, so I expect that you'll be able to reproduce this list. So please make sure that you've gone over this lecture a couple of times so that you have a chance to study that material. Have a fantastic day.